Hey everybody, wanted to bring you a recording on the Lectures of Faith. I think they're very important. I wanted to reread them, so I thought I might as well reread them and record them with the uh, better audio devices and microphones that I have now, since my old videos are sounding pretty terrible. But I hope that this one will be a better recording and that you'll be able to learn something from the lectures on faith. I hope to put out all the videos over time of each lecture and their question and answer sections. Lecture 1, Faith Defined. Faith being the first principle in revealed religion and the foundation of all righteousness necessarily claims the first place in a course of lectures which are designed to unfold to the understanding the doctrine of Jesus Christ. In presenting the subject of faith, we shall observe the following order. First, faith itself, what it is. Secondly, the object on which it rests. And thirdly, the effects which flow from it. Agreeably to this order, we have first to show what faith is. The author of the epistle to the Hebrews, in the eleventh chapter of that epistle, and first verse gives the following definition of the word faith. Now faith is the substance, assurance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. From this we learn that faith is the assurance which men have of the existence of things which they have not seen. The principle of action in all intelligent beings. If men were duly to consider themselves and turn their thoughts and reflections to the operations of their own minds, they would readily discover that it is faith and faith only which is the moving cause of all action in them, that without it both mind and body would be in a state of inactivity, and all their exertions would cease both physical and mental. Were this class to go back and reflect upon the history of their lives from the period of their first recollection and ask themselves what principle excited them to action or what gave them energy and activity in all their lawful avocations, callings and pursuits, what would be the answer? Would it not be that it was the assurance which we had of the existence of things which we had not seen as yet? Was it not the hope which we had in consequence of your belief in the existence of the unseen things which stimulated you to action and, and exertion in order to obtain them? Are you not dependent on your faith or belief for the acquisition of all knowledge, wisdom, and intelligence? Would you exert yourself to obtain wisdom and intelligence unless you did believe that you could obtain them? Would you have ever sown if you had not believed that you would reap? Would you have ever planted if you had not believed that you would gather? Would you have ever asked unless you had believed that you would receive? Would you have ever sought unless you believed that you would have found? Or would you have ever knocked unless you had believed that it would have been opened unto you? In a word, there is anything that you would have done, either physical or mental, if you had not previously believed. Are not all your ex exertions of every kind dependent on your faith? Or may we not ask, what have you or what do you possess, which you have not obtained by reason of your faith? Your food, your raiment, your lodgings, are they not all by reason of your faith? Reflect and ask yourselves, if these things are not so, turn your thoughts on your own minds and see if faith is not the moving cause of all action in yourselves and if the moving cause in you it is not in all other intelligent beings and as faith is the moving cause 
of all action in temporal concerns, so it is in spiritual. For the Savior has said that truly that he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. As we receive by faith all temporal blessings that we do receive, so we in like manner receive by faith all spiritual blessings that we do receive. But faith is not only the principle of action, but of power, also in all intelligent beings, whether in heaven or on earth. Thus says the author of the epistle to Hebrews. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By this we understand that the principle of power which existed in the bosom of God, by which the worlds were framed, was faith, and that it was by reason of this principle of power existing in the deity that all created things exist, so that all things in heaven, on earth, or under the earth, exist by reason of faith, as it existed in him. Had it not been for the principle of faith, the worlds would never have been framed, neither would man have been formed of the dust. It is the principle by which Jehovah works, and through which he exercises power over all temporal as well as eternal things. Take this principle or attribute, for it is an attribute from the deity, and he would cease to exist. Who cannot see that if God framed the worlds by faith, that it is by faith that he exercises power over them, that and that faith is the principle of power, and that it is the principle of power, it must be so in man as well as in the deity. This is the testimony of all the sacred writers, and the lesson which they have been endeavoring to teach to man. The Savior says, in explaining the reason why the disciples could not cast out the devil, that it was because of their unbelief. For verily I say unto you, said he, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Moroni, while abridging and compiling the record of his fathers, has given us the following account of faith as a principle of power. He says in Ether 12.13 that it was the faith of Alma and Amulek which caused the walls of the prison to be rent. As recorded in Alma 14.23-29, it was the faith of Nephi and Lehi which caused a change to be wrought upon the hearts of the Lamanites. When they were immersed with the Holy Spirit and with fire, as seen in Helaman 5, 37, 50, and that it was by faith that the Mount Zaren, Mount Zaren was removed when the brother of Jared spake in the name of the Lord. See also Ether 12, 30. In addition, this we are told in Hebrews 11, 32-35, that Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, and that women receive their dead raised to life again, etc. Also Joshua in the sight of all Israel bade the sun and moon stand still, and it was done. Joshua 10.12 We here understand that the sacred writers say that all these things were done by faith. It was by faith that the worlds were framed, God spake, chaos heard, and worlds came into order. By reason of the faith there was in him, so with man also he spake by faith 
in the name of God, and the sun stood still. The moon obeyed, mountains were moved, prisons fell, lions' mouths were closed. The human heart lost its enmity, fire its violence, armies their power, the sword its terror, and death its dominion. And all this by the reason of the faith which was in them. Had it not been for faith which was in man, they might have spoken to the sun, the moon, the mountains, prisons, lions, the human heart, fire, armies, the sword, or to death in vain. Faith, then, is the first great governing principle, which has power, dominion, and authority over all things. By it they exist, by it they are upheld, by it they are changed, or by it they remain, agreeably to the will of God. Without it there is no power, and without power there could be no creation nor existence.